Sony's latest APS-C offering, the A6700, is a beast of a camera. But if you are coming from a Sony full-frame camera, is it the right camera for you? That's what we're going to talk about today, so let's just dive right into it. Let's talk first about the things that I really like about this A6700. First and foremost is the size and weight. It is tiny, like compare that to say this camera, which is the A7R5, and you can see the size difference. And this is a 35 millimeter 1.4 lens that I have on here, and this is a Sigma 18 to 50. 2.8. So you can see there's a pretty significant size. Now, granted, I have a base plate on the A7R5, but reality is, is you can feel it in your hand and in your bag because it is such a um, more compact and lighter design. Now, the other thing is, even though it is small and light, that doesn't mean that it, the ergonomics are bad. The ergonomics on this camera are actually quite good. It has a really nice hand grip, and I've got larger hands, so having the ability to grab this and hold it comfortably for extended periods of times is great. Uh, some of the other nice features of this camera, again, it's got lots of custom buttons, dials, everything that you would expect on a new Sony camera. It's a great camera, it really is, and I don't wanna bash it. So let's talk about um, some of the things that I find, for me specifically, are not great, and maybe it doesn't affect you, maybe it does, I don't know. You let me know down in the comments. First one is, the lack of a joystick. So I obviously I got into it knowing that it didn't have a joystick. Is it a big deal? Is it not a big deal? For me, it is a bit of a big deal because I do use that joystick, especially for photography. And since this is a hybrid camera, I plan on using this for both video and photography. And uh, not having the joystick is a real bummer. You do have the ability to press this center button and then use it like a joystick using this D-pad on the back. But my experience is I like reserving this button to access my main menu. That's the way I have it set up on all of my other cameras, and I use that a lot. That way, when I press that main button, I can, when I get to the main menu, I can either get to the main menu, and anything that isn't on that main menu, I click on the function button, and I have the ability to have access to basically everything I would ever need at my fingertips. And with this system, I don't have the ability to do that. The other thing that is probably an edge case, but it is a big deal for me, is it doesn't have flexible exposure mode. So if you don't use that for when you're shooting video, then it's probably not a big deal for you, but it is for me because I have that set up on all of my other cameras. Now, I just learned about flexible exposure mode, I wanna say about two years ago when I got the FX3, and that was one of the, the options because it's marked, you know, the, the FX, this is the FX30, but the FX3 is what I'm filming on right now, but on this body, you have the ISO, the iris, and on the back, you have the shutter automatically labeled here, and this is how you control your exposure using these cameras. And I find that that is a very efficient way to film because you never know, like, when you're out and about exactly which variable you're going to want to lock and which one you want to gotta, you're going to want to use automatically. Now, that can still be done with this camera, but not using flexible exposure mode. So I can't reprogram any of these buttons to do auto. It, basically the way it works is you can toggle on the FX30, it's with a long press, but with the A7R5, which is what I have right here, you could do just a single press. So if you press it once, then it unlocks the shutter. So you can toggle between both automatic and manual. And unfortunately, you cannot do that on this camera. So you have to use the traditional PASM dial on the top to control your exposure. So if you wanna lock your shutter speed, you gotta go into shutter priority mode. When you lock, wanna lock your aperture, you've gotta go uh, to the um, aperture mode. When you wanna do both, control everything, you've gotta go into manual. And you want full automatic, then you gotta to get to program mode. So not the end of the world, but for someone like myself who has been shooting Sony now for two years, I've gotten very used to this flexible exposure model and, uh, or excuse me, flexible exposure mode, and it works really, really well when shooting video, and I use it all the time. So not having that on this camera is kind of a bummer. Now, will they release a firmware where they have the flexible exposure mode on there? Perhaps, but my experience with Sony firmware is that I could be waiting a very long time. So I am probably not gonna sit around and wait for them to release that, so I've just gotta make a decision whether I can deal with this or not. And for the price that I paid for this camera, which is a little over $1,000, I might be able to, but 
if it's not fun to use in the way that I like to use a camera, then what are the odds that I actually uh, use it as much as I probably should? I don't know. So, you know, and what drives me bananas is, you know, here on my quote unquote B cam, uh, the FX30, this has it. This has the flexible exposure mode, and it's the same sensor, same processor, same guts as the A6700, but unfortunately, the A67 doesn't have it, and the FX30 does. So I know it can be done. Sony is just making a decision, once again, not to add a feature in here that is so easy and simple to add. They just have made a decision not to do it. So. I don't know, is it a great camera? Of course it is. I think for most people who buy this camera, they're gonna absolutely love it. For me, the reason I got it is just because I'm sick and tired of carrying around this big, huge A7R5 for just like everyday stuff. And uh, this is so much lighter and, and just better in every way, shape or form. And most of the time when I shoot on this A7R5 for stills, I'm shooting in medium raw, which is the same, dimensions, it's the same resolution as an APS-C size camera. So there's really no benefit, uh, or I should say there's no drawback to me getting an, uh, an APS-C camera because I'm essentially shooting in APS-C mode on my A7R5. And you should too, by the way, because you do not need those 61 megapixel files. They are massive. And unless you are you know, in a situation where you know you're going to print that thing out to some huge, you know, print size, there's really no reason to have the 61 megapixels, unless you are cropping, of course. But then I would say, if you're gonna crop, then get, put a different lens on there and, and choose something that is more um, conducive to, to what you're shooting. All right, I'm off my soapbox, A6700, great camera, but again, if you're coming for a full-size Sony camera, it might not be the right camera for you, especially if you value a joystick and the flexible exposure mode. That's all I have today. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.